This right here is the KSO Show. Stay current on everything in the world of K-State basketball and K-State football. We cover everything going inside the two programs. If you want inside information, subscribe to K-State Online and join a message board with fans just like yourself. Now, let's get it. It's the KSO Show. We're back. I know it's been a long wait, uh, you know, the last week or so, week and a half maybe at the max. We've... We've been skimping on the KSO shows, you know, and a lot of stuff's happened in the K-State world, but um, we're going to do a questionnaire podcast right after this. It's going to be a separate podcast. Uh, both are going to go out on, you know, the airwaves basically at the same time, similar times, um, but you'll see the, the questionnaire podcast on the site on Saturday morning, or sorry, Tuesday morning. I, I'm getting my, my days mixed up. Uh, K-State has a basketball game on Tuesday, so I was thinking, oh, Saturdays, because they play on Tuesdays, Saturdays, Wednesdays, and that's just how it works. But that's beside the point. It's Derek Young, Grant Flanders. We're here to talk the news of the day, first and foremost, because we'll touch on pretty much everything else in the Questionnaire podcast. But the news of the day is Tremaine Carroll was added to the Kansas State football staff as the strength and conditioning coach. Uh, Obviously, Dawson has left the program for UCF. Uh, and that's obviously, you know, a move I think that was mutual within the program. So Tremaine Carroll is brought in as a guy, um, that has a lot of experience himself. You know, he's been around to a few places already. Uh, most notably, I mean, re- as recent as U- US- USF, you know, University of Southern Florida. It's kind of funny how UCF is where Dawson's going. USF is where, uh, K-State picks up their, new strength and conditioning coach. And yeah, he's been at this job for, you know, several years at various universities, including SMU, Arkansas. Um, Did I even see that he was even in in the Kansas City area um, at one time? So yeah, I'll bring you in, D.Y., first, you know, before we dive in deeper just about what we think he can do with this program. Talk about what you think about his achievements so far, still early on in his career. Yeah, well, First off, I would say that a strength and conditioning coach is a pretty important hire for any program. You ask probably 99% of college football head coaches, and um, I would say 99% of them would say that it's probably the most important hire that they can make, even more important than an offensive and defensive coordinator because – uh, there's multiple reasons, and one being that, you know, technically because of the restrictions of when coaches can be around players and when they can coach players throughout a calendar year, that it actually comes around um, quantifiably that the strength coach has more contact with the players than any of the coaches do. So this is the guy that they're going to be around the most. Um, so that's why in some ways they think it's the most important hire. Another one is because this is the guy that will be – or woman, but in this case for Kansas State, it's a guy that will be setting the culture. Um, that's what a strength and conditioning coach does. He He's going to be around the guys the most. He's going to know them the most. But he's not just setting you know, a weight plan and regiment for individualized for each kid. He's doing that, but he's setting the culture for the program and has them in the first – you know, in third stages, really, before a college football season even transpires. So a lot of the the molding and and the, the scaffolding and the building that goes on is, is with the strength and conditioning coach. So a lot of football head coaches will tell you this might be the most important hire that you can make. Obviously, Kansas State loses Chris Dawson to UCF. Mm-hmm. As Flando said, I would consider that a mutual at best parting of the ways there. I... I I don't know, and I don't think anything happened. I don't think there was any ill will, but I don't know that they were uh, a match made in heaven at any point in time uh, of being together. And that's Klyman and, and Dawson. I think they have respect for one another, and I think they like the work that each other do. But I do think uh, I don't think it was a relationship that was going to last for you know Klyman's entire tenure in Manhattan. And obviously, it's now coming to a close. Dawson goes with Gus Malzahn to UCF. Kleiman has replaced him with Tremaine Carroll from USF. As Flano said, it's a guy who most recently was at USF, um, but he also was basically Chad Morris' strength and conditioning coach for five seasons. Two of those at Arkansas, I believe, and three at SMU. Obviously some time in Kansas City intertwined in there as well. 
uh, played for Oklahoma State. So he was a college football player in the defensive Big 12. End. Yeah, defensive end. And, and a guy that we know just from kind of our reporting as a site and, and kind of plugging into – some sources that we do have, and it's already been well received by the locker room from everything that we've been able to gather. And that was more so just from player interactions with players at USF who mm-hmm. apparently really loved him, had nothing but great things to say about Tremaine Curl. So this, this is a move that's endorsed quite a bit so far in the early goings by the players and, um, on paper, it looks like a really good move, too. If you look at his experience, what he's about, you, you can watch some of the press conferences, how he can kind of command a room. He's very collected, calm, organized, mm-hmm. and uh, structure is big. He, he has a plan. He is, he's like on a mission, and I like how he, he really articulates himself and has clear and cut goals in some of the presentations that he has given. So um, I, I think there's a lot of good things about this hire. I, I would I would give it close to an A. Um I, I, I know also that I think they they interviewed two people is what I was told. Only two. I know you can sit other places will say it's more. I think it was just two that they interviewed was this guy and one that we, uh, this guy, True Carroll, the or True Main Carroll, <laughs> the guy that they hired, and then Yancey McKnight, who was Tom Herman's guy at both Texas and Houston. Um, we didn't have True Main Carroll's names, and we're not going to pretend like we broke that. Because the only other name we had was was Yancey McKnight. He was one of the two that they did interview. So um, we were able to, throughout the search, kind of pinpoint who was a part of that. But Carol kind of slipped through. Now we did kind of break it and, and share share the news at the same time that Pete Thamel of Yahoo Sports did. We confirmed his report and were told quickly thereafter of the veracity of it and, and stuff of that nature. But So I, I think this is, you know, at least they're painting it that way and, and folks that I've talked to is, is that it's kind of them that picked Carol over McKnight in this case. So, yeah, of course that's, I think what, what we heard obviously. And I think we got word on that. It wasn't Yancey before, you know, even today came, mm-hmm. which was big time. Um, obviously if you're not subscribed to the site, you can do that and you can know all this info, you know, or, I mean, that's the thing is like we said, we were very close to breaking it, you know, with the, the d- Pete Thamel, the dude that did break it. But regardless, yeah, if you want, you know, all the info and the talk and the conversation about all this stuff leading up to this kind of thing, not just strength coach, but in the future of, you know, anything regarding this um, type of stuff, whether it's a coaching change of, or in, of any sorts, you know, subscribe to KSL. But um, I will say I, I have a question for you. So Chris Dawson, you know, he's been in the program for years and years and years. Right. He a Bill Snyder's guy after yep. – um, after Mark Mangino was taken out of KU because mm-hmm. he was Mark Mangino's guy first. Bill Steiner comes back for the second rendition at Kansas State. You know, the first thing he did was make sure he could get Chris Dawson. Yep. And I think there's even players on this current roster that obviously uh, I think Cooper Beebe is one we can point out as someone that did, is even a, a, a younger guy that respect Dawson and really liked the work he did. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess, is there anything that leaves with Dawson uh, that Tremaine Carroll can't plug in with his philosophy and everything that he brings because he does automatically already relate to these players instantly uh, compared to Chris Dawson, who's, you know, um, not I'm not going to say an old guy, but older than Tremaine Carroll. Yeah, I would say Tremaine Carroll, what he will have over Dawson is probably, like you said, along the lines there, maybe some immediate respect just because of his age. And probably his race in a little bit too, mm-hmm. because he he obviously will have a connection to some of those players as well because of that, and, and just like Dawson would on the other side of those things. And for Dawson, I think though, and and it wasn't obviously just racially driven. I'm not saying that, but I think Dawson also was someone that that a lot of the locker room respected as well because he could get the most out of you. Um, talking about you know how there's there's a difference between hard work and working hard and I think he was a really good teacher of that and really was able to break through with some kids that way and and, and instill that type of I guess atmosphere or culture for a long time towards the end I would guess it's it's not resonating as much as a, his message not resonating or was it you know a couple bad kids in a locker room you know we'll never know because yeah. now now both are, are parting ways really um and some, sometimes a change of scenery is good for everyone, and you wonder if that's going to be the case here for Chris Dawson because obviously no one um, 
no one has a perfect relationship with everyone. Yeah. Um, you're always going to probably clash with a few people here and there. And I think that was the case for Dawson. But as his chapter comes to a close in Manhattan, I think it'll be one remembered by, you know, he really did, you know, you know, he was in Manhattan for yeah. that second run under climb, and he's going to be known for a lot of wins as a strength coach too. And something that should be noted, he's obviously, he, you know, he's <laughs> he's been at many years at K-State doing this job, but he's obviously not washed or else UCF wouldn't have came around. No, he's not washed. He's still pretty up. young. Yep. I mean, he got, a, he got a raise at Kansas State last year because Alabama and Oklahoma flirted with hiring mm-hmm. him. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, sad to see him go, but then, you know, you get the news of Tremaine Carroll a few days later. And it's, you know, exactly what I think K-State needed. And it's like you said, Chris Kleiman, I mean, coaches around the country will look at a strength coach, you know, as one of their top priorities. So I guess um, my question to you, was that another reason you think Kleiman kept Dawson was, you know, I, we probably had this information at the time when this happened, but, you know, he didn't go out and get a strength coach right away for his staff. He kept Dawson in, in the program. Do you think that was a way to bridge something and then keep him around for a few years and now you go get your guy? I think it was that. A, a pretty good bridge, help a little bit with continuity um, and stuff of that nature. And I think because Chris Dawson still does have respect from a lot of his peers, so mm-hmm. I think that had a lot to do with it. And I also think that something that had to do with it was Chris Clement's first pick even back then still wasn't Chris Dawson. It was Jim Cramer in North Dakota State yep. who didn't come, still doesn't want to come. He's been tr- – several teams have tried to court him away from Fargo. I think he just wants to make his home there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the time, Kleiman probably thought, you know, I don't have a lot of great other options, so Chris Dawson's a pretty good option. I'll just stick with him. Now, you know, you have a couple of years, and you're probably like, well, I really want my own guy, stuff of that nature, you know, um, just a change of scenery is needed for both sides. Mm-hmm. And he probably knew a guy or two, it seems like at least two. They got interviews, him and um, Carol McKnight that says, hey, I got options just as good, if not better. It's time to go, try to make this move. So then what do you think the instant impact, or will it take a while? Do you think this acclamation will be seamless for a guy like Tremaine Carroll, I mean, he's been around, you know, probably. To, to many. Yeah, he's been a pl- schools. Not long ago, he was a player. He, he's still younger. He mm-hmm. still looks like he gets after in the weight room. Absolutely. He's someone that's going to connect and relate. So I don't think it'll take too long, but it would probably be easier for him, to actually, if it was a month ago at the start of the winter program. Mm-hmm. They're about ready to come to a close. Spring football starts in two weeks. So, that yeah, that, that could be definitely interesting. Might have some have. hiccups with that just because, yeah, he's a newer guy coming in middle of something that, you know, probably could have been here a month earlier. But obviously the way things mm-hmm. work out, uh, that's how it worked out. Um, but, you know, it's an exciting hire. I mean, I don't know what else we, we can add to this. We're about 10 minutes through this podcast, 12 minutes. Mm-hmm. So if, unless there's anything else you want to add, we can wrap this thing up and then, and then get on to an, another podcast to record. Yeah. Let's All do right. It. Thank you, uh, D.Y. I'm Grant Flanders. That was the KSO Show talking about Tremaine Carroll being the new strength and conditioning coach for Kansas State football. Don't forget to do what you always do and tell your friends. Yeah. Yes.